Public Library and I have another story for you this week. And it's a good one. It's one about something you and I love. I'm sure you do. It's about vegetables. That's right. Vegetables. And most of us love vegetables, but some people don't love vegetables as much as maybe they should because after all, they're really healthy for you and well, they taste lovely. So we're going to read about that story today because zombies don't eat veggies. And that book is written by Megan Lacerda and Jorge Lacerda. And we are going to read it today. And I hope you like it. Let's open it up and see. And this book is published by children's book press so we will I think I heard it thank them for letting us read it in quarantine yes you ready I hope you're not too scared let's try it Mo was a zombie with a deep dark craving it was dreadful devious absolutely despicable Mo loved to eat vegetables. He grew all kinds of veggies in his hidden garden. And then, in his secret kitchen, he crafted celery, cucumbers, tomatoes, and carrots into delicioso meals that he devoured with delight. Mo's mom and dad did not love vegetables. Not one bit. Veggies were yucky, disgusting. Que aso. They were not allowed at the Romero's dinner table. Ready to chase some humans in the marathon next week? Mijo? <gasps> Zombies were supposed to eat zombie cuisine like brain cakes, brain stew, and brain and bean tortillas. Mo's parents insisted that their niño eat only zombie food. Finger foods, mi amor. Gracias, I am not hungry. <sighs> Mo tried to convince his mom and dad to give peas a chance. He sneaked in vegetables wherever he could. Head of lettuce, grains. But Mo's attempts were fruitless. His parents wanted him to accept who he was, a zombie. And zombies don't eat veggies. Mo knew he did not like zombie cuisine and he couldn't imagine letting go of spinach or cucumbers or kale forever. If zombies are only supposed to eat zombie cuisine, Mo started to wonder if maybe he wasn't a zombie after all. Day after day, Mo wondered how he could make his parents understand his love of veggies, his tomatoes, were tantalizing. His cucumbers, crispy. His peppers, perfection. Add onions, some garlic, a touch of cilantro, and 
gazpacho. Holy, yoli! Mo had an idea, his best one yet. He grabbed his book of recipes. His fingers flew across the pages until he found it, the recipe for a tomato and veggie filled soup. He was sure the tomatoes would make it look bloody and gloopy, just like a zombie dish. His parents were going to devour it. Mo chopped and diced, blended and pureed, perfected and poured. And finally, the soup was finished. Mo carefully shuffled it over to the house for dinner. Where he found a feast fit for a zombie. Mo, you're just in time. <gasps> Try some armpanadas, mi amor. Prime cuts, Mira. I made spicy mayonnaise. <gasps> Pickled tongue. Arroz con spleens. <laughs> Famoso chili con hoyo. Uh, Doritos for dipping. Arm panadas. Mmm, tasty, right? I made something for you to try too. It's called blood bile bisque. Bon appetit gave it five brains. Five brains. Smells strange. Looks delightful. Cinco brains must be delicioso. They dug in. Mo closed his eyes and sucked in his breath. This was it. They'd savor the soup. They'd ask for mas. Mo imagined breakfasts, lunch, dinner, snacks, all vegetables. Raw, cooked, steamed, and fried forever and ever. He saw all his dreams coming true until his parents did not like the soup. Not one bit. Dios mio! This soup tastes like, like, like vegetables. Yuck! Mo's heart sank in his toes. His plan was a bust. How many times do we have to tell you that zombies don't eat veggies? Maybe other zombies don't eat vegetables, but I do. Mom and Dad, I'm different. But I'm still me, Mauricio, Romero, your niño, your mo. Mo reminded his parents that he liked chasing humans as they ran in marathons. <laughs> he also loved doing the zombie shuffle until the moonlight with mom. And he promised he'd always cheer for dad during championship brain-eating contests. He was a zombie and a Romero. He just liked to eat vegetables. Mo's parents loved their son and finally accepted it was okay to be different. They even promised Mo they would eat more veggies for him but only a teeny, tiny bit. Fried fiddle hair ferns, yum, 
artichoke hearts and elbow macaroni. Uh, Pada cones. Ears of corn with dead sea salt and butter. Mm. Still, be still my heart of palm chopped salad. The Romero's knew that most zombies don't eat veggies, but they were more than zombies. They were a family. And look at, there's a recipe they have here for Moe's Garden Gazpacho, mm, or also known as Blood Bile Bisque. Mm. Do you dare to try it? Looks like it Oh my goodness. And there's even more recipes. There's zombie finger foods right here. That looks so good. It's done with celeries and peanut butter, it looks like, and some nuts. Oh, that would be fun to make. And the Romero's family famous chacamole. Mmm. With lots of avocados. One of my favorites. Wow, that was a good book. I hope you like that one. Kind of silly. But it's good and it reminds us, wow. There's so many things we can make that would be tasty. And so I got another book. Just a tiny little book. Just a little extra to sort of eat on the side, right? This one is kind of silly too. And it's called A Potato on a Bike. And it's written by Elsie Gravel. I like her books a lot. And it's published by Orca Book Publishers. So we will thank them for letting us read it here in quarantine. A potato on a bike. And the potato is saying, tra la 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 la. <laughs> okay. All right. Have you ever seen a carrot taking a bath? No way. Way. A broccoli that can count to ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? No way. No. <gasps> A flying toothbrush? No way. <laughs> no. <gasps> Poop wearing glasses? Without them, I can't see a thing. Ah. No way. <laughs> no way. Absolutely no way. A dancing cookie? No way. A singing tomato? La 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 la. No way. A fork? Driving a car? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? No way, that's right. <laughs> A pickle playing hockey? No way. A cupcake on a sidewalk? No way. A fly that's talking on the phone? No way. A potato on a bike. Tra la 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 la. No way. A 
ball sitting on the toilet? Pfft, no way. <laughs> no. A garbage can playing the drums? Bing, 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 bing. No way. <sighs> this one's too silly. Maybe we should just end it right here. We don't need to finish the book, right? You guys don't need to see this one. Do you? You want to see it? Well. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. We'll continue. A sausage? Reading a book? <laughs> no way. No way. Someone tickling a baby? <laughs> yes way! Or a kid. Maybe not even a baby. Tickling a baby. A kid. Yes, way. Ha. Exactly. That was a good one. I thought that was a really good one. What do you think was the silliest thing there? The potato on the bike? The sausage reading a book? Um, the broccoli counting to 10? Or something else? I don't know, but I thought that was a pretty silly one, and I thought we would just throw that one in on the end because... I know you like vegetables, but maybe you never thought of vegetables in the same way after reading that book. And that's the great thing about books. Sometimes you think of new things when you read books. So I hope you'll think about that one. I hope you'll come in and get some books here at the library that we have for you. And I hope you have a really good weekend. That's right. All right. Have a good week and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.